All right. Are we ready to go from zero to blog? Huh? <laughs> Let's do it. All right. So who am I? This is in Ruby, right? So who am I? Uh, <laughs> I'm Hardy Jones, a uh, longtime PureScript enthusiast. Uh, love the community. Love everybody that's in the community. I love getting to meet people. Love seeing what's happening. Uh, currently work at No Red Inc. That's us. We do education software to help people learn English better and use it more effectively. Um, we're hiring almost all the time. Uh, we're mostly known for being an Elm shop, but we do a lot more than Elm. So we have like a couple of Elixir services. We've got a build tool that we use internally that is written in Haskell, and we'll hopefully have another Haskell server starting up pretty soon. Um, and then we have like an 80,000 line Ruby monolith. So a little something for everybody. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> I do a podcast with Brian Lonsdorf every week. Uh, it's like a 20, 30 minute thing. We talk about programming stuff. We talk about non-programming stuff. Um, if you have the time, give it a, give it a, uh, a look. And uh, that's me on Twitter. Everywhere else I'm Jones HF, but on Twitter I'm SD58, whatever. So what is Hyper? Hyper is a uh, library or a framework that helps you write servers uh, more correctly, better, right? So what does that mean? That means that like when you try to implement the server, you have to like send the status code, then send the headers, and then send the body, right? You can't mix it up. If you mix it up, it won't type check. It also means that you get the ability to do uh, like type level APIs. So similar to what you get in Servant, you can describe the API as a, data, as a, a type alias, and then you can evaluate that in different contexts. So you can evaluate it as a server on the back end. You can evaluate it as a uh, client on the front end, or you can do both, right? So you'd have the same code running on the back and the front, and you'd have like isomorphic pure script. No, okay. <laughs> it was made by this person. I'm not going to try to say his name, but he's done a lot of great stuff, and Hyper is just the latest, um, and it's written in pure script. Uh, so, 10 minutes, let's do it. No. <laughs> We're just going <laughs> to. All right. So, uh, where are we? Installing the dependencies, right? So what do we have for dependencies? We've just got uh, Bower, Pulp, Pure Script, normal stuff. A couple of scripts here. In the uh, Bower, there's the regular Pure Script stuff, and then Hyper, Hyper Trout, which gives us the, the API routing stuff, and then a Postgres client. So, um, oops, we can run that, and it's not really doing anything. It's just going to print out hello lambda conf. Cool. Uh, so next. We want to make an actual web server. So we're going to actually start to use Hyper, right? So if we look at what's in the blog, we've got this stuff now, right? So we pull in a bunch of stuff, and then we set up our server. So we just use the, the default options here, which is not important for right now, and like some context. And then we have the actual server. So like these are things that you can use to uh, change the way the server works. And as far as what we're doing in the server, we're just going to spit out a 200, and then we don't have any headers, and then we just spin out the, the actual content. And like, uh, as I mentioned before, if you like mix this up, then, well, it's not running, but it, it would tell you that that's a, a type error. So uh, that's, that's the server right there, a couple, couple lines. We can run that. And then if we go to localhost, we got a server in like one line under a minute. Not bad, right? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so next thing, um, we want to do an actual w uh, web server here and like actually have a blog, but we're going to need some place to store the, uh, the post, right? So let's set up a database. Uh, and what that means is basically nothing. Um, we start to use the, pure, the, the Postgres component here. Um, so we set up a connection pool, and then we pull a connection from it. And then later on, we'll start to actually use the connection. But nothing else has changed here. Um, the configuration is just what you would expect from like a Postgres thing. Nothing really amazing here. Um, there's also a couple things to um, added a couple scripts to help us with uh, the Postgres stuff. So there's one to create the user, and then one to uh, create the database, and then when we get to it, one for the migrations. Right. So nothing's really changed. We can run it again, but it doesn't. It's not any different. So I'm not going to actually run it. But we can go forward and start doing the blogs. Right. So what does this mean? This means now we've got a whole bunch of stuff here, right? So the, most of the connection and setup stuff is still the same, right? We actually start to use the, the database connection now 
and we pass it down into this with our server here, right? So our server, what it does is it takes the connection, and I, this part is not really that interesting. So we're parsing a form out of uh, all the requests, and assuming that we get one, uh, we'll pass it down into the, the actual server to do the work with that. So that's for like when we um, make a new blog post or something, we need the form data that's coming back from it. Uh, so down in the actual uh, server, we're using the hyper router. It's got two arguments. The first argument is the Excuse me. The first argument is the uh, proxy for our type alias for what we want our routes to look like, and the second is the actual server, and then there's this thing which is like the what to do when there's a routing error, and we don't really do anything. We just like send up whatever the status was, like a 404 or whatever. Um, so the blog here is just a proxy for what our data type and what we want the server to look like. That means that there's no real value implementation of what we're describing the server as. It's all in the type level, right? And so what we're doing is we're using this thing called scaffold that I kind of invented. Uh, but not really invented, mostly just stole from DHH, where uh, <laughs> you say what path you want the server to, uh, to display at. So here we're going to do um, slash blog, and then what values we're going to display at slash blog. So we're going to try to display posts, right? So we can look real quickly into the scaffold. This is mostly all uh, boilerplate, but this is how you would define the different routes in Hyper, right? So you have uh, maybe an index route, some CRUD stuff, some other things, and each of these uh, little operators here are alternate routes that can be. So like you might match the index route, you might match the CRUD route or the new one. It's just saying which ones you can do. And the uh, how these are implemented underneath is just more of hyper stuff down underneath itself. So like when we look at new, it's gonna take whatever that name is. So it'd be blo uh, blog and then append a new onto it. So we blog slash new and you'll get that in the browser. And then similarly for all the other stuff. This is just like almost all boilerplate that you don't really wanna look at. But each of these different um, type class instances tells you how to display the thing for whatever um, route you end up hitting. Uh, the server, if we look real quickly, is something that we actually do the implementation of, right? So here we have to match each of the different four routes that we had in our um, API specification. But like the names here don't really matter, right? We could rename this to whatever. But what is important is that the types line up to what we had in the, in the server API. Um, and then again, a lot more boilerplate and it does like a bunch of SQL stuff, which is also derived from the thing. So if we run the blog again, check it out. Oh, gosh. <laughs> we got to go to the right spot. No? Goodness gracious. Well, sorry. <laughs> uh, that's disappointing. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, well, you could have done something. You could have made some posts and you could have actually used them. Uh, we can look at what the post is. It's just a data type that is uh, a new type around nested tuples. We use the tuples because the, uh, the Postgres adapter uses nested tuples as well to do the thing. Um, so it's just easier to do it really quickly. And uh, we derive a couple instances, and then we say what to do in each of these cases, right? So when we want to show a post, we don't really do anything. We just rely on the underlying stuff. The only interesting case for posts is uh, the, the plain HTML that we're trying to implement. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, so since that doesn't work, <laughs> I'm not really sure what to do there. But let's just keep moving forward, right? We'll get there somewhere. Uh, I think I might be over on time. Hey, we got something. Okay, so this is a thing now. Uh, there was a, a, a difference that I was gonna show, but we've got post now. You can hit show, you see the thing. You go back, you can edit it. You can say, uh, I don't know, that's not English, but whatever, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can add a new post, give it a title, or just the body, sure, why not? There's a thing. You can kill them, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so there's probably more, but I don't want to take too much time. So that's, that's effectively it. Hyper, you got uh, type level routing, you've got derivable uh, servers, derivable client implementations, uh, and a poorly made blog in 10 minutes. <laughs>